Hi, this is Sally Morgan, Tellington T-Touch Practitioner, Physical Therapist, and Kearney Sacral Therapist for Animals and People. And this is an episode of Conversations with a Corgi. And this is Tristan. He's a corgi. He's wearing one of Judy Ryan's bow ties today. He's looking very dapper. Let's see if we can get that tie in the shot. There we go. Looking cute. Oh my gosh, the tick saga continues. I was telling one of my horse clients yesterday about my ticks in my bed experiences and she was laughing hysterically and really since none have bitten me it is sort of funny so yesterday my poor Tristan I mean he cannot touch this yard and if it ever stops raining I will cedar everything and then we will be able to go in the yard again we are missing our hammock time and I would be in the hammock every day because it's not on the floor of the yard. However, one day I was laying in the hammock only and I had a tick on my neck at night. So I don't even trust the hammock. I think they really love hemlock trees. So yesterday I took my little Tristan across the street there. You can see right in this area, that's where we do our business, number two. So we went over there and I kept a close eye on him, didn't let him go and grass more than an inch high. Sure enough, I bring him out into the road. There's a big tick on top of his head, two others attacking his cute little eyeballs, <laughs> and then another one making its way up his mitten. So, you know, as any good mother would do, I picked him off and squashed him in the road with a rock, and I think some of them escaped. Hi, Pam Richards. <laughs> Must be sunny. She's gardening. Oh, boy. Um, wait until, oh, I can't wait to meet the chickens. I love chickens. I think chickens are some of the best things ever, which is why I can't eat them. And even eggs from chickens, I know, feels a little criminal to eat them, but I'm very excited about the chickens coming, and so is Tristan. Tristan actually has a degree in duck herding, so he can gather up those chickies, and boy, I would love to have a few chickens in my yard. So anyway, that was our tick adventure yesterday. Poor Tristan. It was hard on him. He doesn't understand why he's not allowed in the yard. So today we're outside, in spite of the fact that it was drizzling and I had to move inside, and then I came back outside because very far in the distance here, I have this wonderful wildflower garden the woman that lived here before me planted. And they have, um, it's kind of seasonally, like every couple of weeks, the colors and flowers change. So what we have out there now is a lot of beautiful purple lupins. And I mean, they are just spectacular. I don't know if you can see them very well because they're pretty far away, but they are back there in the background. And God forbid I get any closer because of the ticks keeping me out of the yard. And also today I am wearing my new corgi shirt. It has a corgi and a pocket. And this was for a fundraiser for St. Jude's. And somebody put it on the internet on uh, Corgi Nation, Corgi Strong, and said, you know, buy this to help people at St. Jude's, which is um, a charity that I particularly feel fondness for, having worked at the Shriners Hospital here for a while when I was a PT. And of course, who can resist a corgi in your pocket? So they come in black and gray, and the people have started getting them in the mail yesterday. So we're all really happy to have our corgi in the pockets. And um, it's a Gildan shirt, which is one of my favorite kinds. It's the kind that T-Touch people initially, well, I think they still are using for their uh, merchandising and they're great products. They wash well, they don't shrink, they actually fit women's bodies. I look horrible in t-shirts generally, but I can actually wear these. So <laughs> anyway, Tristan's excited, aren't you? I have a corgi in my pocket and he's a little smaller than you and you have been called by Gwen a pocket corgi. And he is, he's just a little smidge. So <laughs> I had a horrible migraine yesterday, suffered, suffered throughout the day. Um, dropped the TV remote under the bed, looked under there and saw dust bunnies that were horrifying. So today, even though I still have what many people that get headaches call a headache hangover where I'm just not up to snuff, I have got to vacuum the upstairs of the house. And Brian's coming over later today to help me with some things. I am feeling very ambitious and I want to steam clean the rugs in the downstairs. Because one thing that happens, my Sonny Buns here is a sloppy eater and he's been eating Honest Kitchen with turkey cooked by mom 
who ignores the fact that she's cooking meat in her house because I am a vegetarian. Um, and he's a bit of a sloppy eater. You know what? He doesn't like carrots very much. And he picks them out and spits them on the ground. So the rug, and he does have a placemat, which I have to say is the same placemat Judy gave me in like 1990. Um, and I've used it for all of my corgis. And it's so cute. It has dogs dining in a restaurant with little waiter dogs serving them. It's absolutely adorable. Hi, Michelle. See you in a couple of weeks. Then we'll do a Facebook Live with you and Tristan. You can talk about how much you love him. Anyway, so around where this mister eats his dinner and breakfast, there is just a nasty mess. And knowing that it's raw food, I really feel the need to steam clean it. So when Brian comes today, he will lug that baby out of the basement and I will steam clean Tristan's lunch area and some other areas of the downstairs. And hopefully I won't get sick again. <laughs> so that's our exciting news here today. And I hope you can hear the birds. Um, a little while ago, the owl was hooting when I was setting up and you might hear him again. Actually, it's a har. They have babies just across the back here, um, which is in front of me today. I have a great yard. I'm really looking forward to doing a lot of these in the yard if I can walk out here safely. I have a labyrinth to walk in with dogs. It's really beautiful. I have a wonderful blue and purple flower garden, um, which actually is on a patio area, so it might be safe to stand there. Anyway, today we're going to continue our talk about wraps for people, and I love this particular wrap. I haven't used it a ton, but, and if I don't have my other safety pin, I'll be really sad. Where did it go, Bess? We had another safety pin. We're going to have to do it without it because I don't know where that went, but we'll find it. Anyway, this is called the rib wrap, and um, I've used it. I have some broken ribs from a few years back, and um, it says in the T-Touch wrap book a story of a woman who had had a really bad car accident and found a lot of relief with this wrap. And one of the things I know about rib fractures is that they hurt a lot if you breathe, and God forbid you don't cough or sneeze. Uh, and they take a long time to heal, and they don't do really anything about them. Sometimes they'll be people will be sent home with an ACE bandage and told to put it pretty tight around their ribs which frankly, I know that hurts a lot and most people don't do it. But this wrap is really gentle and it also, again, like all of these wraps, really helps your posture. A lot of riders like this wrap to help with their posture and it just gives you proprioceptive feedback all the way down your spine. And again, it lines up your vertebrae, one, two, three, four. You can feel them adjusting after you've worn this wrap. So I have, once again, two wraps pinned together here. And I will try not to wrap in my microphone. And so you start on your chest. Microphone might get a little wrapped in. There you go. And you just bring it around your back. Super simple. Even a person alone can do it. Biscuit's holding my wrap for me. He's helping. Corgi assist. And you cross it in the back and then bring it around your front, cross it in the front, and then bring it around the back and cross them again and then bring them around to the front. So I'm just going to tuck mine in because I don't have a safety pin. So, I don't know if you can see, this wrap is here, and then it crosses under your chest. Whoops, mine's coming undone because I didn't tuck it enough. And it crosses on your back, and then you just have one last one that goes around your waist. I can't attach it that way. Well, maybe I can. Let's see. Where's my purple end? neighbor dogs. All right, so you can see I have it crossed under my ribs and then down around my waist again. And this is a good wrap just to feel your whole trunk. And it, even though it's super tight around my waist because I didn't make it tight enough everywhere else right now, um, it feels pretty good for me. And now there's another variation of it which I personally like better. And that is where you start with it under your bra line and go down because again, I have a lot of problems in my lower thoracic spine 
and this feels very comfortable there. So, you know, you can have it up here where we started, or you can just start under your bra, which for me feels a lot better. And for anyone who's big chested, I think the support of this underneath would feel really comfortable and good. It's like a nice hug, um, but nothing like a Spanx. That's too much hug. And it's just, it's just a great um, wrap to use to help your ribs. It helps make you more aware of your breathing. This would be another good wrap to use when you're doing yoga, again, to bring attention to your breath and to your center. And if you put the bottom low enough so that it was going around your sacrum, it could help keep you grounded. Um, and I think this would be a nice wrap to use uh, when I'm cleaning the house later today um, because it does just give you some proprioception around your waist and help you feel um, where your body is in space. So that's the rib wrap. And it really just goes around your ribs. And it's similar to ones that we use on dogs and horses. And I find it a really helpful wrap for, like I said, anybody who's had some injuries. If you had any surgery, maybe a gallbladder surgery, um, a hysterectomy, this would be a really good wrap to use after that. You know, when you have any kind of major surgery on your body, your body is really traumatized. Even though you have a good surgeon and you know, I've had some of the best surgeons in the world work on me and they've talked to me while I've been out and Bernie Siegel always tells stories about um, doing surgery and like the area where he's working being overcome with too much blood and he can't see what he's doing and he just says, um, liver, can you please take some of this blood and give me some space here to see what I'm doing and every time it works, suddenly the area is clear and the nurses are aghast because they can't believe it. So, you know, he knows a lot about what happens to your body during surgery, and you are really present even though you're knocked out. And I found with dogs, um, because the way they put a dog when you're going to spay or neuter them, they're upside down with their arms out. And there's this kind of attempt to crouch in, to curl in, to protect the body um, from the surgery, no matter how great a surgeon you are and how gentle you are when you do that kind of work. And so it's just the body's natural protective mechanism. And having something like this wrap after a surgery will help bring some comfort to an area where you have had surgery. I think having the wrap up here after a mastectomy or a lumpectomy might be really comforting and useful for people. Um, and it does give you a, really a sense of your right and left side. Um, this is also a good wrap to use if you tend to shift to one side. A lot of people with disc problems in their back, their spine will go up and then shift to one side and over. Or if you have scoliosis, same kind of thing. And this is a good wrap to help keep you straight. Of course, it's covering my cute corgi in my pocket <laughs> when I have it up there. So I, I like this wrap. I don't use it very much because really some of the other wraps are my favorites. And if I'm going to wrap myself, I almost always do um, the one that's just around this area with a little bow in the front, just like you'd wear if you were going out. So. Um, that's really the one I use most of the time on myself, besides some of the other ones I want to show you in a couple of days, where you wrap down your arm or your legs. The leg wraps are so wonderful on a person. I really, um, it's going to be hard for me to show you them. I might have a little skeleton to help me show you what they look like. But until you try a wrap on your leg, you have no idea how great the wraps can be because they really, really help you um, level out your stance and they change your gait they really bring an awareness to your walking that you don't have uh, without the wrap biscuit it's getting dark out here it's supposed to be kind of sunny and then cloudy and then cloudier and colder tomorrow and then rain again oh boy one day we will have weather that the ticks don't like and i will be able to spray and we can go in our yard we have a confidence course out there um, Chris, Tristan has some of his agility equipment out there, which he would love to show off. He loves his teeter totter. He loves to bang when it flips down. So we could have some fun out there, couldn't we, Tris? Of course, <laughs> trying to hold the camera and get it on the right thing is a little tricky when you're by yourself, but we might be able to work it out. I think my kid has a little bit of dandruff from his bath. I think his ears didn't quite get rinsed enough, but that's okay. Better dandruff than ticks, right, Tris? So that's the rib wrap. I'm going to take this off because I really didn't put it on right and it's getting kind of tight around my middle. But it really has helped some people. I had a client once after her gallbladder surgery. I showed her um, 
a skimpier version of this wrap and she found a lot of comfort. She wore it all day really when she was out of bed um, and it really helps. So if you have any kind of upcoming surgery um, or you know someone who is having surgery, get them a wrap. <laughs> if you're really nice, you will dye it um, for them. This is just Rit dye and it makes such pretty colors. I mean, they have so many different ones now. Um, but for anybody that's having surgery, this would be a really good present for them as a couple of wraps that they can experiment with because they are really helpful after any kind of trauma, like a car accident or surgery or even just a, a fall. Right, Tris? He's looking out at the lupins. Over in the side yard here, I'll try to take this off and show you. Over there, that's where the mooses are seen. And then out that way, that is where the owls live over the ex beaver dam because <laughs> um, they caught and moved the beavers. And then, of course, that's the front side of the house. And over there is the side yard. And that's where I have something called uh, shaggy bark hickories, which apparently are some of the favorite foods of squirrels. So the squirrels gather the hickory nuts, which are kind of big and it's hard to believe anything can bite into them, uh, bury them all over the yard and spend the winter trying to dig them up. And I have quite a few squirrels, really fat ones. They must love the hickories. Um, and then I also have some red squirrels, which have been quite the naughty little critters. I mean, my house is really tall and the only way to get to the roof, I'll show you, actually, you can see. The only way to get to the roof is to jump from that tree over to there. So the red squirrels go up there, get on the roof, and then they climb down. Now, my front side of my house is three stories. It's really tall. And they somehow slide down through the angle of the roof and run around on a little um, piece of trim out front. And the little buggers <coughs> before I moved in had actually scratched a hole into the house and were running around in the house, like in the wall. And the woman that lived here before me thought she was going nuts because she had people coming and looking in the attic and there was nothing there. And I don't know who she called, but it wasn't my squirrel man who came and knew immediately. I pointed to the area and he knew right where they would be. <coughs> so he was afraid of ladders. He put the ladder up and went up there and tried to, um, well, first of all, he put a bunch of screen and things on the house so that the little buggers can't break in anymore. Um, and then he had this uh, cage, you know, a trap, full of peanuts and delicious squirrel treats, which they completely ignored. Um, and finally, he was up there one day, and I think he caught him in a net. He's walking around up there checking, and a squirrel happened to jump to the roof. And then he was trying to make a run for it over the front side of the house where it's lower to jump off. And the squirrel man was able to catch him and nicely relocate him to another area far away. And that disrupted their family enough that they have not broken into the house again. But usually early January, I hear a lot of scratching and they are attempting to get through his uh, wire and mesh that has been put there to keep them out because they really are creatures of habit. And I do love red squirrels. They're really cute. But boy... Some of the places over where I used to live, where it's a seasonal place, a lot of people are only there for a month or so in the summer, the red squirrels can break into the house and create quite a lot of problems. Like seriously, you have to call out the insurance company for an estimate for the damage because they can chew, chew, chew. So we don't have that problem anymore. We just have ticks now. <laughs> and uh, that's about it, right, this? And there's a few of um, the caterpillars around from gypsy moss, but they seem to be dying. I don't know what caterpillars need, but they're not finding it in my front yard or my backyard. So hopefully you can get a look at the lupins. I don't know if I move this closer. They're a beautiful purple flower with like cones on the top. Out there by where the cars are. So tomorrow we will be back with another Conversations with a Corgi. At around 9.25, hopefully things will be uh, moving better for me and I will be completely over this headache. Ugh. And um, then Monday and Tuesday we will be off and we'll be back on Wednesday. And I have a special talk for tomorrow I, that I'm working on, hopefully. And if that doesn't work, we'll have another one. So we will see you guys tomorrow at 9.25. Try the rib wrap or recommend it to any friends you know who are having surgery or who have had an accident or have had pain in their body 
And Tristan, do you have anything to say today in particular? No? He says, thanks, Judy Ryan, for my bow ties. I love them. They're great. Mom thinks I'm cute in them. See, he's wearing his green and yellow one today. And thanks, Aunt Judy, for sharing them with us. Aunt Judy, swell. She wants me to look cute. Biscuit. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Bis, what do you think? We'll fade out with the corgi music. Thanks for joining us. This is Tristan. Oh, <laughs> and a corgi in my pocket. That's not Tristan. For conversations with a corgi, and we'll see you tomorrow around 9:25. Thanks for joining us.